the August 19th, 2019 Salina City Commission meeting to order and ask for a roll call. Mayor Davis. Here. Commissioner Hay. Here. Commissioner Hodges. Here. Commissioner Hoppick. Here. Commissioner Ryan. If you're able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no awards and proclamations, so we will move into the, I'm sorry, we do? Oh, I was just reading facial expressions and I thought I made a mistake, sorry. <laughs> we'll move into the Citizens Forum, which is an opportunity for anyone to address the commission for any item not on the agenda. I'm gonna ask that you limit your comments to five minutes. Good afternoon. Joan Ratzleff, Salina. Um, actually, the thing that I wanted to comment on is related to uh, an item in the consent agenda, and that is appointing new board members. Um, I've mentioned this before, and I think this is an appropriate time to say it again. And being on the consent agenda, um, I didn't have any comment about uh, the appointment of the members exactly, but what follows. Um, when I was first appointed to the board that I've served on since 2014, um, I received an invitation to come to this room to have an orientation and training that was offered to not just my board, but um, a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of new uh, vo citizen volunteers. Um, and that was a good experience. Even though it was general, it was valuable. Um, I don't think that's been done in, since then, and we had a change in the ordinance in 2017. It added ethics training that's supposed to be done every year. Um, the board that I serve on has never had that training, and this is 2019. So I would suggest two things. One, that uh, city commission direct staff to reinstitute that um, invitation and have that um, that orientation for new board members so that it is consistent um, so that it's um, you know it's good training and it's wonderful to see your your neighbors and your friends who are volunteering on other boards it's really nice experience I think it's community building and we need that in Salina um, the other thing the second that I would like to suggest is that we not only have annual training on ethics, on that ethics policy, but also for COMA and CORA. I really think that's lacking. Um, and a refresher on those things because, you know, there's, there, there, there can easily be some confusion on, on different situations. So those are two suggestions I wanna make. Thank you. Thank you for bringing those to our attention. Anyone else? Okay, we will move on to the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of August 12, 2019. Item 6.3, adopt resolution number 19-7728, appointing members to various boards and commissions. Mr. Mayor, it's not very often that I ask for something to come off of consent, but given uh, some of the recent changes on the, the board appointments and a recent question that was raised, uh, I'd, I'd ask that you go ahead and take it off of consent so we can provide you a little bit more detail. Okay, 6.3 will be removed, leaving just the minutes for the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Moving and seconded to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries four to nothing. 
and we will now come to 6.3, uh, which is the resolution appointing members to various boards and commissions. And I think this is the, f the first time that I've been involved with this where we actually had more youth vacancies than adult vacancies. I'm not sure where our youth are, but uh, message to parents, uh, let's get, get our youth uh, re-involved. Uh, there are pl plenty of oppor opportunities here. We, we certainly have quite, we, ha we have a lot of board positions in general, and then we certainly have a lot of vacancies, and as you know, as you well know, in terms of trying to identify them and, and review applications, there's there's a lot going on here. Um, I've got a handful of things, a couple of revisions that I want to call to your attention. Uh, on the housing authority, it, it was brought to our attention that there was, I guess, a HUD guidance that they did not recommend that landlords that participate in the Section 8 housing program be board members of the Housing Authority. And so that necessitated a change in the uh, recommended appointments on the Housing Authority. Um, and I think, he, is it Elizabeth Reckenberger that was recently added? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. at, as of today, that's the change. Uh, and then there was also a recognition that a person was listed twice on the Solid Waste Management Committee. So accounting for that, uh, that adds Patrick Harrington as a recommended appointment to the Solid Waste Management Committee. And then I don't know that this has come up before, but the recently, went, like as we were walking in today, uh, there were questions about the effective date of these appointments relative to the upcoming uh, meetings of each one of these committees. And so, as you can see, uh, the that, well, I think all of them indicate a, an appointment expiration date of August 31st. So our, our general process is they go through the end of August and then the appointments uh, become effective September 1st. We don't, and we've got to have a little bit of lead time. We can't hit the date right on the nose. Um, but that then uh, called into question, that question pointed out that I don't know that our resolution specifically provides an effective date of September 1st. Furthermore, then I guess we have one committee that needs this appointment to have a quorum so they can have their August meeting. So I, th <laughs> I think what, if we want to try to address all of that, I think um, the resolution should be uh, described as being effective September 1st with the exception of the Housing Authority appointments being effective upon adoption. But the City Attorney and I have not had a, a, a full opportunity to even talk that through. So I probably need to consult him at this point. No, that makes sense. And I, um, that should work if it works for you all. And then lastly, if you'd like me to speak to training, I'd be happy to do that as well. Please. Um, I, I agree with, with Ms. Ratzliff. It has been inconsistent. Um, the train, the approach we had to training previously was we would call a meeting and invite uh, board members to one evening session, and attendance was was not very consistent. It certainly wasn't fully representative of the appointees. So, and then uh, we have talked about the need for ethics and coma and Cora. The staffs looked into a couple of approaches. Uh, the the vision that I initially had was. Um, there are other organizations that have uh, video training that you can take and then you actually confirm by way of answering some questions at the end of that video training that you, you didn't sleep through it, you actually uh, uh, viewed it. Um, and, and if you don't get the questions right, you can take it again. We've looked at that technology, but we've not found a real good resource, uh, cost-effective resource. But we have talked about um, making at, le at least a video uh, option available and, as Ms. Ratzler pointed out, some, some boards and commissions need quasi-judicial training while others don't. And so trying to kind of make it more of a module approach so that we can tell people if you're on this board, here are the things you need to look at. Um, we've yet to get that fully developed and implemented, but that, that's kind of our vision. That could, could mean a, an evening where we do a verbal presentation and then we also make the videos available. I know the commission previously asked for absolute confirmation that, that board members had taken training before they could serve on a board or a commission. I think the best we're probably going to be able to do is a, one of two approaches. We keep offering repeated training until people come, but I think that's going to be very meeting intensive. The other option would be we produce the videos and they're on their honor to at least affirm that they, they watch those videos. And, and you know, the conversations we've had 
I don't think you want the combination of all that to exceed two hours, but you might be able to break it up into coma and CORA and, and uh, ethics and then just the parliamentary procedure, those type of things. So that's kind of the vision, <coughs> recognizing that we're going through board appointments. We're, we're trying to uh, finalize that and come up with a, an approach. And I would imagine since meant most of these board appointments are for several years, uh, you know, the education can be an ongoing process throughout the it can. I, th I think prior commission direction was they wanted all the training done before they serve their first meeting, and I just because of the breadth of the topics and the approach, I'm not I'm not sure we're going to be able to get that accomplished just yet. If we get the videos produced, hey, we might be able to make them available and and ask that they affirm that they've watched them. Just two nuts and bolts questions. Uh, what's the method by which the appointees are being notified that they have been appointed? By letter, so snail mail. Okay. Um, and uh, there would be nothing that would preclude a new appointee from if that committee has a meeting. Yeah, they certainly the could attend. They certainly, because these are open meetings Correct. anyway. So Very yeah. seldom is there an executive session on one of these committees. If that were the case, they wouldn't be able to attend the executive session, but they certainly could attend the open session. All right. Commissioner Hodges, I think you had a I, I, I was just going to say I really like the idea of doing some sort of um, video modules and I've had to do that with other organizations in the past where you know what you you, you fill out you you watch the, the the video you answer the questions it, it doesn't let you just skip to the end <laughs> because it times you but um, I like that idea but until maybe we get something like that developed would it be possible to go ahead and at least offer um, in person, a, 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 an overview of, of, of would, board yes. tr training, um, especially since it looks like we're going to have some considerable turnover over, you know, in the next couple of weeks. We, we certainly can do it in person. Um, my concern is we just don't get the greatest attendance, and if we want to have a broader reach, it's probably going to take more than that. But we can we can do the in person and build the video. Well. Mr. Mayor, I'd add to that several departments have multiple boards, like I have seven, and we do board orientation with them every time that you guys go through a large kind of ad. So sometimes it's once a year, sometimes it's as many as three or four times a year, but we have them in for lunch, we run them through a presentation, we hit ethics, we hit CORMA, um, and then every fall all seven boards get basic ethics training and we kind of reiterate Open Meetings Act. So. And we've, it, we're on year two of this, but we've kind of gotten into a system and it seems to have worked. But it, it's hard to coordinate everybody, but we've found that if we kind of hit them both ways. So, and then we normally make contact with them after they get their letter or sometimes before and let them know when their next possible meeting is. Sounds like most of that wheel has been invented. <laughs> and I, I was going to say if I was going to get a hold of Mrs. Shandy to see if she would uh, give me a list of the youth board members and what boards are open and then qualifications and I will start with the schools again and go through the schools again like we did last time we have we pretty well filled quite a few of them through the schools last time and I'll be more than happy to do that again excellent that would be great yeah and then I'm going to leadership Salina I think next week for their speed dating where they're trying to connect people with volunteering in the community <laughs> and I'm representing boards and commissions for the city of Salina. And then I also present at Junior Salina and try and encourage the kids and take our, our vacant student positions to that. And we managed to get four last go, so. So represent us well in this speed dating, okay, Lauren? No judgment, but do well. She, she was sought out as a speed dater. I'm sorry. She was specifically sought out as a speed dater for a reason, so. I think she will represent as well. Right. Any comments from the public on this? Bill Black, Salina, and I believe I'm one of the appointees to the Solid Waste Committee. My concern is that the committee's meeting Thursday. I know I could attend in an open session. I couldn't vote. And as I said last time, it's just the three Dillon stores is over 100,000 bags a week. So as I've read the agenda, it shows that the plan is to simply take the 2018 plan and forward it that would be the city's resolution. And I personally would like to see an amendment on there that this could be at least, there could be some form of a study planned and uh, because the next meeting is the end of December. So 
maybe this committee could postpone this meeting for one month itself. I don't know. I don't know what the structural requirements are to do that, but it, it concerns me a little bit that the first vote I would have would be December and 100,000 bags a week. That's another 1.2 million bags from those three stores. So if there's something we could do to make that happen, that would be great. Yeah, well, rather than postpone the meeting, the, the committee could postpone the action but I, item. It would postpone so. my vote. All right, but they could postpone the action item to then allow for that vote in December rather than I have no cancel control and postpone. at this point. That's well, why I'm bringing it up. So I understand. We, and we don't, uh, between vacancies and the process to, uh, to truly create a, a, an open seat for you to fill someone, rather than just let someone's term expire, they'd have to be removed from mm -hmm. the committee. And that, there is a process for that, but it takes attendance pro issues and notice from the mayor and, and, and a, a correction plan. And so I, mean, I understand the sense of urgency, but the way this is kind of built, they have a term through the end of the month. And I appreciate your idea of possibly postponing that action item. Yeah. But, but again, it's not until December. So the, the report, I think, is due then. So there, I, you know, I, I get that there's a system in place and we have to follow it, but I mean, yeah. Wait, there's, there's other an than, issue too. So uh, Other than appointing the day of the expiration, there's always going to be a transition period sure. as we make appointments. I don't know that I have a solution for that. Well, I hope we can come up with one. That would be my only hope if something must be done. There's got to be something. I mean, we're smart people here. We can figure this out. But if not, then, you know, I mean, not that we're not smart, but <laughs> I don't mean that. But if nothing can be done, nothing can be done. But, you know, we've been postponing this since April. So thank you. Thank you. So I have um, a kind of a follow-up question to that. If um, a person has not been appointed yet um, and the packet of information that goes to the board, that's public information, correct? And there wouldn't be any problem with sharing that with anyone who's not on the board. No, that'd be fine. Uh, yeah, it's, I thought I, I, I needed to clarify that. Thank you. All right. Hearing no other comment brings back to the commission for action. I'll try this. Mayor Davis, I move we adopt resolution number 19-7728, appointing members and various boards and commissions uh, effective September 1, with the exception of the Housing Authority, with that um, uh, being effective upon the adoption of this resolution. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 19-7728 with the additions as read. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries for nothing and thank you to all the citizens who have agreed to, to serve. Let's go to administration 7.1. Item 7.1, second reading, ordinance number 19-11012, levying special assessments against certain lots and pieces of property to pay the cost of abatements of nuisances. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Ordinance 19-11012 was passed on first reading on August 12th, 2019. Since that time, no comments have been received. This ordinance is to levy um, nuisance abasements against properties. As you recall, I reported that at the time we had billed $80,101.71, of which $16,400.87 had been paid, with the remaining amount to be assessed of $63,700.84. Um, tonight, we'd ask that you um, approve this ordinance on second reading, approve it with the amendments, postpone consideration of the ordinance, or vote to deny the ordinance. Any questions? Okay. Uh, no, uh, I don't think we've received any comments since last week. Any uh, public comments, discussion, <coughs> questions? Okay, bring it back. Mr. The Mayor? Yes. <laughs> make a motion we approve on second reading ordinance number 19 11012, leveling special assessments against certain lots and pieces of property to pay costs of abatements and nuisances. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded uh, to approve on second reading ordinance number 19-11012. Uh, we'll do the vote by roll call. Commissioner Hay. Aye. Commissioner Hodges. Aye. Commissioner Hoppick. Aye. Mayor Davis. Aye. Motion carries four to zero. We will now move to 7.2. Item 7.2, Water and Sewer System Revenue Refunding Bond Series 2019-B. 7.2A, Receive Report on Final Terms of Bonds. 7.2B, Second Reading Ordinance Number 19-11011, authorizing the issuance and delivery of Water and Sewer System Revenue Refunding Bond Series 2019-B. And 7.2C is resolution number 19-7734, prescribing the form and details of and authorizing the delivery of water and sewer system revenue refunding bond series 2019-B. Good afternoon again. This series of 2019-B refunding bonds um, will refinance the callable higher interest rate maturities of outstanding water and sewer revenue bonds series 2011-B. The bonds were sold on August 14, 2019, and uh, Mr. Dave Arterberry here is here from George K. Baum, and he's going to give you the report on how that sale went. Thank you. Good afternoon. I've got a, a little hand out here, more paper for you. Thank but, you. Um, this is just a Thank set you. of final schedules for the new bond issue, and I'm not going to go through page by page and um, look at the numbers, but I would point your attention um, to page number As Debbie mentioned, the, um, the bonds were offered last week to investors, and the old bonds, um, the 2011 bonds that were mentioned, carry an average interest rate on them of um, about 4.36%. Um, after the offering of the bonds um, was finished up last week, the, the final result is that the new bond issue uh, carries an average, um, carries an all-in interest rate. And, and when I say all in, I, it, that includes issuance and all related cost of, of the bonds um, of 2.038%. Um, so more than cut the interest rate in, in half on the bonds. And you'll see there on page number three, the actual uh, savings that will be the result of the reduction in the interest rate. Um, approximately $170,000 in savings per year for the next, I think that's 11 years. Um, which totals up to uh, $1,885,000 in, in savings. Um, quite a bit more than not only we, had we anticipated last time, which I think was a million five, but when the issue um, was originally being considered to be refinanced back in 2017, I think the savings we were looking at at that time was um, a shade under a million dollars. So waiting has definitely paid off for the city. And, um, so the actions that you have in front of you tonight, there's um, several steps, but th these will represent the, the final action items that the commission will need to take uh, in order to authorize um, the issuance of the refinancing bonds and essentially lock in the, the savings. So um, this has kind of been a long time coming, but uh, the, the final result is um, much better than it had originally been anticipated. So. Obviously, welcome any questions on any of the pages or anything else you might have. Thank you for your uh, efforts. That's a nice return on your work. Well, <laughs> sometimes getting lucky helps. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're quite satisfied with the report. Thank you. On a fiscal note, these bonds will be repaid out of the uh, water and sewer system and they've been included in the long-term financial role. So will we evaluate those numbers and get those savings put in that when we do our rate study in coming here in the next month or two? Um, we do have two actions tonight. Action one is ordinance number 19-11011 with four options to pass on second reading, pass on second reading with any amendments that the city commission deems appropriate, postpone consideration, which may provide us with losses from these savings or vote to deny that ordinance. And also resolution number 19-7734, which prescribes the form and detail of the, of the sale. And the four options here are also to approve, approve with amendments, postpone, or vote to deny. All right. Uh, any other questions? Any public comment? 
Bring it back to the commission. Mayor Davis, I move we approve on second reading ordinance number 19-11011, authorizing the issuance and delivery of water and sewer system revenue refunding bonds, series 2019-B. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve on second reading ordinance 19-11011. Uh, vote by roll call, please. Commissioner Hay? Aye. Commissioner Hodges? Aye. Commissioner Hoppick? Aye. Mayor Davis? Aye. Motion carries four to zero. 7.2C, any action? Mayor Dave, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I had, to, I, had to, I had to get to the right place there. Okay. Uh, Mayor Davis, I move that we approve resolution number 19-7734, prescribing the form and details of and authorizing the delivery of $10,330,000 principal amount of water and sewage system revenue refunding bonds, series 2019-B. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve resolution 19-7734. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries for nothing. Thank you very much for making the trip in. To see us. Thank you. Just stay the right side of two. <laughs> okay. right. Get the max value out of that plane ticket there right. or, or the drive. Uh, 7.3. Item 7.3, resolution number 19-7735, authorizing the issuance of general obligation temporary notes, series 2019-2, as a private placement. Thank you again. Um, on November 1st, 2018, the City of Salina sold general obligation temporary notes, series 2018-2, in the amount of $13,500,000 to temporarily finance the downtown streetscape and the police training facility projects. Those notes were scheduled to mature on November 15, 2019. As the downtown streetscape project progressed um, quickly, we did some permanent financing on those, that issue in April, of April 24, 2019, which paid off a portion of these temporary notes, leaving the balance on the temporary notes, um, the portion allocated to the training facility, which is $4,945,000, which is due on November 15, 2019. On August 12th, the City Commission approved construction contract for the project that exceeded the original budget uh, authorization and will require us to, re to request additional funding that will occur in spring of 2020 when the City goes through their annual funding process. In order to issue permanent debt financing on the project, we'll come later before you to um, ask for an amendment to that original project authorization and when we get closer to that financing in the spring. As the police training center project has been delayed, permanent financing is not expected to occur until the project is under construction sometime in 2020. In order to meet the payoff of the, the balance of the 2018-2 notes that are due in November of 2019, staff conferred with our financial advisors and bond counsel at George K. Baum and jo Gilmore and Bell and determined that, it was in, that in order to, to avoid additional issuance costs for such items as the official statement bond rating costs and others, um, it made sense to seek interest from local banks to privately place the renewal of these temporary notes on a short-term basis through 2020 of May of 2020. Um, at, as the part of this process, the Director of Finance with the assistance of George K. Baum will reach out to local institutions that the city already has current relationships with and ask them if they would like to bid on um, and solicit bids on these notes. Once bids are received, this action will be brought to you in front of commission to accept those bids. In the event that there is insufficient interest among area financial in institutions to purchase the notes at a fair market rate, the notes will then be go through traditional um, public offering. There'll be no additional costs at this time for this issuance of temporary notes. It'll be built into the issuance. Um, staff has provided four options for this recommendation. To approve resolution number 197735, authorizing the issuance of general obligation temporary notes, series 2019-2 as a private placement. To approve the resolution with any amendments that you might see. To postpone consideration of this and, and give us direction or to vote to deny and give us direction on how to pay off the temporary notes that are due in November of 2019. I'll stand for questions or Dave will stand for questions, whichever. <laughs> Question. What kind of interest have we had before from local institutions to do something like this? Um, you know, it's the, 
the city did this, um, oh, I think in 2016 or 17 when you had some uh, of the early temporary notes for streetscaping. And I think there were about four, three or four financial institutions submitted proposals. So, so I'd hope we would get a similar response this time. And you talked about a competitive interest rate, so I'm guessing somewhere in your mind you have a number that we can live with. Yeah, I, okay. I do. Well, not right now, but I will by the time we get right. the bids, yeah. Any questions, comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the commission for action. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion we uh, approve resolution number 197735 authorizing the assurance of the uh, general obligation temporary notes series 2019 2 as a private placement. Second. We moved and seconded to approve resolution 19 7735. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries four to nothing. Any development business? Any other business? Yes, ma'am. I just have one quick thing, and that's that um, I'm the commission's liaison to the North Central Regional Planning Commission, and at our meeting this week, it's our annual meeting with re the region's um, legislators. So if there is any message that I can carry to any of the, the senators or the representatives, either you know from the city or from any individuals, please please let me know if there's any questions or any things that we would like to have them um, focus on in the year ahead. I know that we traditionally kind of do that before the um, before we do the legislative tour in in January, um, but this would be a good opportunity to have their ear and to have the ear of just more than our local legislators, but to be able to talk to people in the North Central uh, region that probably share a lot of our same concerns. So, you know, if there, if we have a statement from, from last year that, you know, merits reinforcing with them um, or anything new that staff has um, identified as a problem beyond sales tax collections. <laughs> That's what I was um, just gonna bring up. Yeah. Um, I would just encourage you to let me know, and that meeting is on, on, on Thursday, so. I can catch up with you. The, they're not new, but online sales tax and dark store theory have taken on heightened uh, importance or concern to me, and we have position statements on both of those that I could get to you. That would be great, thank you. And I just have an article here I'd like to share with uh, all the commissioners. This was sent out um, by Penny Bettles from SDI. This is a night about a nine page article that was done by uh, Manhattan, Kansas, came out of Manhattan that talks about our downtown redevelopment and stuff. So it's an interesting article. Yeah. Just wanted to share that with you in case no one had seen that, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. Entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Thought I wasn't gonna get that second. All right, all in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Thank you, see you next week. Got some signing I for him to, to do. I was going to say where it came from because I thought I knew. I didn't write it down. I gave away one that I had. Um, I, I